Before we get into applying loads in Abacus, I want to discuss the concept of unit loads from a FEM perspective. So when you think of finite element method, um, it's easiest to think of it as a system of springs as shown here, where you have a spring with a, si with a stiffness K, and then you have an applied force at a node, and that node displaces so much. So when we talk about linear FEM, there's really two fundamental equations that, that come to mind, and it's just two. It's F equals KU, which basically says that displacement linear scales with the load, and then also our stress equation here, which equals Young's modulus times strain, which if you expand strain, it's going to be the change in length over the original length. In this case, our change in length is U. So those are really just the two equations um, that come to mind. And if you think of it in this way, you'll understand the unit loads concept. The whole purpose of unit loads is to apply a simpler load, like a 1 PSI pressure load or a 1G load, and then scale that by a factor to the load you want to look at. So a lot of times when you're in industry, um, people will change things on you. So they may say, hey man, look at this um, this structure. Tell me if it'll survive a 6G load. And then you go run your 6G load and you get a result. And then they come back and say, wait, no, make it 9G. And then you're like, ah oh, man, I gotta go rerun this analysis. Well, if you stick with the unit G concept, apply 1G load and scale that by the the factor of uh, you know uh, that they want to look at the structure at analyze the structure at it's a lot easier to do post processing and I'm going to prove this right now so over here we have our spring system and we're going to determine the stress for this system you have an applied force F so we use our fundamental equations F equals K U in this case um, our U is going to be uh, some displacement uh, or change in length u underscore 1. If you solve for u1, you get f over k. So then we go to our stress equation. So our stress is proportional to Young's modulus times strain. And then you expand those terms and you get this result right here. Stress is proportional to displacement, where E and L naught are constants. So now, say in the second situation, you apply a force that's twice the original force. So let's go see how that works out. So using our fundamental equations, our force becomes 2F equals K times our displacement, new displacement, U underscore 2. We solve for U underscore 2. We get 2 times F over K, which if you go back up here, F over K equals U, U1. So you apply twice the force, you'll get twice the change in length. And if we calculate the stress for that, stress is equal to our Young's modulus times our change in length over original length, which our change in length is U2. So if we plug in 2 underscore U1 for U2, we end up with this equation right here, which is essentially twice the value up here at the top. So, so what this tells us is if you apply a scaled load in finite element software, it's going to scale the stresses by the same amount. And that's really important concept. It'll save you a lot of time and you can also make it negative. You know, flip the sign. Um, but that's really this you know, we, we looked at a spring here but that applies to beams, trusses, and triangular elements, tetrahedral. It, it extends to those elements too. That's why we, we start with the spring. So in conclusion, um, the loads linear scale, the stresses. So if, only, if you only apply one load, say a 1G load, it produces a stress sigma. Then a 10G load will produce a stress that's 10 times the original stress. And this changes if you apply like two loads. So if you apply uh, a 10G upward load and a um, 5G aft load, 
well then this doesn't really apply you'll have to uh, determine the resultant and scale it that way but if you have one load you can scale it and uh, this is really important for post-processing as we'll go to in the in the next we'll see soon we'll see this soon in, in the next few videos so anywhere you can apply unit loads it's a smart way to do it and it'll prevent a lot of headache in the future because your colleagues gonna come back and say wait look at this load and if you apply a unit load then you can just scale it under linear FEM conditions so guys Hope you liked the video, and I'll talk to you next time. Adios.